Um, first off, just uh, you know, a thank you to our coaching staff for all the hard work that they have put in to get us to this place right now. Uh, in order to be able to sign uh, 16 high school young men and uh, eight transfers, uh, it's a lot of hours uh, on the phone. It's a lot of hours texting. It's a lot of hours watching film. Uh, and it's a lot of hours finding out uh, if they're the right fit for the University of West Florida. So uh, to my staff, uh, very much appreciate everything that you've done uh, to get us to this point right now. Uh, we wanted to be able to add depth at certain positions while also continuing to build uh, a roster that we feel uh, can be competitive next year in the Gulf South Conference. And everything we've done since day one uh, is to find the right mix of student athletes who will represent this university in a first class manner while also knowing that in 2016, which when I took the job was two years away, uh, is now uh, under nine months away uh, to be able to compete in the toughest football conference in the country. So uh, we feel we're well on our way to doing that, and we feel like we have added a great group of young men uh, to be able to get to that point. Starting with the transfers, uh, all eight of these uh, young men are here and they are with us on campus. They're currently working with our strength staff, uh, going to class, and uh, you can see three offensive linemen, all of them uh, about six foot three, 300 pound plus. Uh, that's the norm for our conference. And then you see three wide receivers. Uh, we felt like that was one of the positions, uh, wide receiver, that we immediately needed to address going into spring ball. And really, we were able to get a very nice mix of uh, a couple of four-year transfers along with one junior college transfer. And then um, quarterback position, anytime you're able to get somebody who started in our conference, who has experience starting games in Caleb Nobles, uh, we feel very fortunate about that. And Everett Curry, our defensive end uh, from Stillman College. Uh, Stillman, obviously, their program is no longer uh, in existence, and uh, we feel fortunate to be able to pick up uh, Everett in that process. When you look at our high school signees, uh, again, from all over the state of Florida. Uh, Karan is listed, uh, hometown of Denver, Colorado, but he really is from Jacksonville. Uh, Denver is where he was uh, born and where his family's from, but he currently resides in Jacksonville. But when you look at this from the state of Florida, really all the way down uh, to Broward County, all the way up to Escambia County, I think we covered the entire state. And I think we uh, evaluated uh, anybody who was in their senior year that fit the criteria academically and character wise of what we're looking for. Um, probably the, you know, one of the highlighted positions here because we were able to sign four defensive linemen. Uh, feel very good about the athleticism uh, in that group right there. Um, the speed in our secondary with the two young men we were able to sign there and then continued to get more athletic at the wide receiver position. Um, so as we stand here today, we have 96 players on our roster who are participating, going through spring, and will be available to go through spring practice. We'll add these 16 uh, true freshmen, and then we hope to uh, sometime around May uh, probably add a few more transfers to our roster. The majority of our team, uh, you know, since we started it, has been freshmen. Uh, we have 70 freshmen on the roster right now. They all redshirted. And then, we again, we're going to add 16 true freshmen uh, this fall. And we'll probably add a couple of walk-ons to that number as well. Uh, so when you look at our roster of over 115, 120 people next year, close to 90 of them will be freshmen or redshirt freshmen. So... Uh, with that, would love to answer any questions about this class uh, or about any individual uh, on this list or about the process. When you uh, were scouting the players and looking at video, did anybody jump out at you? Uh, you'd see them and you say, hey, we've got the max. Yeah, the 16 we signed. So, uh, yeah, all 16 jumped out at us, uh, and we said we have to have them. Uh, and that's really, you know, that, that's really what it is. Um, we, we probably individually, each coach 
um, you know, myself, five full-time coaches, four graduate assistants, 10 of us, uh, we probably individually each look at over 500 uh, players just in a one-time evaluation before it even gets to the staff. And so you had to jump out uh, for us to get. Now, we didn't get all the guys that jumped out to us, uh, but the, 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 the 16 is, is a really good group. Well, uh, I I don't want to say it was easier, but it was simpler, okay, because we already had pre-existing relationships. You know, we had three coaches who joined us after uh, December 1st last year. And so it was their first time going into Tampa, Orlando, Lower Alabama, Broward County. I mean, we had never been, you know, they had never been there. Uh, So when Coach Sanders, Coach Williams, and Coach Crutch joined us, that was their first time out. This time we had spring, and then we had fall, and, and then we were able to get back uh, in December, and then able to go back again in January. So just familiarity. Uh, again, it was probably simpler. I uh, don't know that it was easier because there's still a process in that. And I mean, uh, one of the things in you know focusing on this group and going with a smaller um, you know list, getting it you know smaller, we didn't have as big a recruiting weekends as we had a year before. Uh, last year, we were probably somewhere between 15 and 25 at each recruiting weekend. Uh, our largest recruiting weekend this, uh, this year was eight. And we, we, we narrowed that list and we fine-tuned it. It allowed our uh, recruiting coaches to be able to visit certain guys in their position. Uh, so it really worked out well for us getting to know each young man uh, on the list very well. Sure. And, and really on the defensive side, I think we have, I mean, of the 16, I think there's 10 or 11 on the defensive side. Uh, and uh, we've really kind of taken the best available approach. Uh, you know, who's the best person on the board and uh, who do we have the best opportunity uh, to get? And so with those defensive players, we feel like we really uh, gave ourselves a good shot in the arm uh, with some very, very good uh, athletes. I think from the back end standpoint, uh, we added a lot of speed and athleticism in our linebackers and our secondary. And then from defensive line, uh, we, we just got quicker, uh, and with Daryl, we got bigger. Uh, so, I mean, we kind of hit everything that we were looking for uh, from a freshman defensive class. No, he really is. And, and Kashan, I mean, very good athlete as well. And you just, like you said, you look at him and the amount of space that he's going to take up. He'll play uh, our boundary linebacker, which does rush and, uh, you know, drops into coverage uh, at times. But he really does take up a lot of space. And he was at our camp and did a great job. We were able to track him, obviously, all season long. Uh, saw him play live a couple of times. I think uh, most guys on the staff had the opportunity to do that uh, and really feel like he's a great fit uh, for what we're doing. And we think his best is in front of him. Six foot five, 201, 210 pounds, somewhere in that range right now. Um, and, you know, uh, we, we think he can easily be 225 at some point in time. Uh, uh, and just continue to get better. So uh, we're very excited that he chose uh, the University of West Florida and to be a part of our program. How important was it to bring in an experienced quarterback and not only one of the players was level, but to have the playoff experience too? Well, I think it's huge. Any of the transfers that we bring in, and uh, quarterback obviously is a position where uh, you know you have to have some knowledge of how the process works. Uh, Caleb is a great addition to our quarterbacking group. Um, I feel very good about the guys we have here on campus, and then adding obviously uh, Chris Riddle, uh, a freshman, to that mix as well. But uh, having Caleb gives us someone who has game experience, 
And that's really with, with all the other transfers as well. We, we, we have, I think, except for the running back uh, and tight – well, I think we do have a transfer at tight end. But for the running back uh, position, I think we have a transfer at every other position, which just gives that position group, uh, you know, a little bit of a little more wisdom, a little more no, a little more knowledge as to how to prepare and what that process looks like. Did it help the recruiting efforts this year that uh, you could go out and now tell players if you come to us, you'll be in uniform this fall instead of being a practice year? Well, I think there's there was a lot of pluses to last year's recruiting class because they were the first ever. They uh, were the first football players on campus. And they had the opportunity to really kind of establish the tradition uh, of what our program can look like in the future. Obviously, the uh, lure of being able to play immediately helped in this class. Uh, they did not have to wait. They did not have to redshirt. Doesn't mean all of them will play and doesn't mean we will not redshirt some of them. Uh, but I do believe that helped. And what was really probably the best selling point uh, of the whole process was the fact that we had players who were here and could talk to the recruits and tell them what it's like to be coached by us. Last year, all those recruits had to believe us that we were good guys and that we knew how to coach. Okay, This year, we actually had players who could back that up. Uh, and that, you know, that obviously played huge dividends when talking to parents and kind of saying, hey, this is really what they're like and this is really how they do things. Well, no, it's it's been it's been a great process, and I mean, what happens? I mean, just you know, first off, I've got great assistant coaches who do a phenomenal job when they walk into the high school. So now they've got somebody who's coming in representing the University of West Florida, representing our program, uh, and when they do that, they do a phenomenal job doing it. And so the first impression of what is West Florida football going to be like. Uh, is a very professional assistant coach walking in there uh, representing our program uh, in an amazing manner. So that, that right there helps us uh, and helps me be able to uh, then be able to talk to them about what the future of our program looks like. And we've been able to be in, uh, you know, I don't know how many high schools are in the state, but we've been in a lot of them. And we've been able to make great connections. And we're building the trust that needs to take place in this recruiting process. A coach needs to be able to say, uh, I really trust the coaches at the University of West Florida, and I feel like if I send my player there, he's going to get uh, a fair opportunity and he's going to have a great experience. Now that we have players and we've gone through a fall and we've been able to build that, they're starting to see that. And then also how we conduct ourselves out on the road and how we, you know, how we treat the, you know, the players that we're recruiting. So I, I feel very good about what we've been able to accomplish over the course of, you know, about two years ago, I was hired, uh, you know, in order to be able to make this what it is right now. Uh, and for us to be able to be in this place where, you know, we have uh, great connections with a lot of high school coaches and, you know, they're contacting us right now. Would you be interested in this guy as a walk on? Would you take this guy? And then the other thing that's happening is, hey, we got a guy who went away and he's not happy. Would you guys be interested in talking to him about transferring? So all of that is because I have great assistant coaches who do a phenomenal job representing our university. I guess one thing, you know, you, you were able to show boosters today, the, the football field out there. And the significance of today is really, like besides signing day, is it's exactly seven months. It's a couple of days. <laughs> You're going to be playing. And I just, can you speak a little bit about that? I mean, it's, it's here. Well, no, it is here. And, you know, um, when I got here, Dave asked me to put together kind of a timeline of things that are going to need to take place. And what are some of the things that you see playing out? Uh, and I was looking at that list the other day. 
And, you know, when you get to uh, January of 2016, you know, my comment on it was, you know, now we're on the clock with everybody else. <laughs> you know, all that stuff we did before, the uniform or, hey, let's show the helmet and, you know, hey, let's have our first practice. All that's – now we're on the clock with everybody else. And, and again, uh, our objective and our vision for this program was, you know, we're not looking for guys to be starters at the University of West Florida. We're looking for guys to be starters in the Gulf South conference. Uh, and we have held to that in every person that we've tried to bring into this program. Can they fit that mold and will they have that opportunity at some point in time? Uh, and you know, that, that's why I feel great about the guys we've signed uh, and who we have on our list. And then to be able to now show some physical progress with the university changing and the landscape, you know, uh, developing into we've got our field uh, we've got a place where we can put a building. We've got the opportunity to now show people what our future looks like. Uh, you know, it was one of the fun conversations with Dr. Benz today was just like, you know, hey, you know, this area was very rarely used. You know, this area really didn't have much going on, uh, you know, taking place on a daily basis. Now it's going to be used and it's going to be a focal point uh, of this university for years to come. And that's where our field is. And, and that's an exciting time in the development and the growth of our program, as well as this university. What are you doing all the quarterback change? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, you, you know, I think Ohio State, you know, proved that, you know, if you're three deep, you got a chance. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and so uh, Ohio State, that'll, that'll keep – you know, for the next 20 years, we'll be able to use that to keep that third team quarterback engaged now. OK. And then you tell the fourth team guy, look, you're second team now. All right. So the Ohio State fourth team quarterback was second team in the national championship game. Uh, so we'll have great competition there. And that's really what we want at every position. And I, and I don't think you can uh, ever uh, not have enough competition really at any position, quarterback position, you know, falling right into that category. We need each guy playing at his best. One of the things we tell our players is we're going to, you know, we're going to watch your highlight film. And if we like your highlight film, then we're going to watch a game uh, to do a full game analysis of you. But we're going to hold you to the highlight game or the highlight reel uh, expectation. That's the level we expect you to play at, uh, and that's the level that we want you at. And so as we evaluate them, we know what they're capable of. It's our job now to coach them to that level. Uh, and so we feel like, you know, it, it's going to be a lot of fun uh, with the competition that we've added in this group right here. Yeah, what's next in the run of spring practices? Well, what, what's next is uh, our guys started – an off-season conditioning the second day of school. And so going back to, I believe that was January 5th or January 6th, somewhere in there, we started working with our strength coach, Kent Morgan. Okay? And we have nine weeks of continuous off-season conditioning, weight training, running, agility drills in preparation for spring ball. We go on spring break. Uh, and then when we come back from spring break, which I don't have the calendar in front of me, I think it's like March 22nd, somewhere in there, we will start spring ball. And we will have 15 practices, which will lead up to the spring game, which will be April 16th, which is a Saturday. And so we've got a lot of work to get done uh, from this point until March 22nd or March 23rd, whatever that date is, uh, to get our team ready. Uh, great news is, I mean, now we've got the turf field to be able to uh, go out there. I mean, a day like today would keep us from going on the grass because it, you know, can't handle that amount of water. Uh, turf field, we're able to go out there and not miss a beat in anything that we're doing. All the practices, I mean, we will use the turf field for every practice. Um, It'll just depend on, you know, it may be one side of the ball or it may be this phase of the practice, but we'll be on it every time we're out there. We'll be, you know, and uh, obviously if, you know, we're not on the whole thing, the kickers will be out there kicking field goals. And, you know, one, one of the advantages, if, I, if, I'm a, if I'm a basketball player and I want to go shoot a free throw, all right, every court has – a free throw line painted on it, a half court line painted. You know, I know where the three point line is. If I'm a football player and you don't have a turf field, there are no lines unless somebody's painting those lines. 
You know, so when our quarterbacks and wide receivers wanted to get together prior to this week, they're out there putting cones out to try to figure out where the hashes are, where the numbers are. So, uh, you know, having that field out there and having a turf field is a huge advantage uh, for our guys that, you know, we haven't had. So we'll, we'll be on that. I mean, as soon as uh, you don't get keys to a field, I don't, you know, you get keys okay. to a building. Uh, as soon as they give us occupancy rights or whatever they do with an area, uh, we'll, we'll be on that a lot.